Hi, I'm Holly Matheson and I'm the Music Director of Symphony Nova Scotia. Today I'm answering a really interesting question about what it means when a musician talks about playing in tune. Now that's a really massive topic and I could probably write several PhDs on it to be able to answer the question properly. So I'm just going to concentrate on three factors that I think are really interesting. The first is that being in tune is actually a totally subjective thing and means different things in different music cultures, different cultures around the world. As an orchestra, we follow a, a Western European tuning system that came into place in the 18th century. And basically, it's called equal temperament. And if you took two notes exactly an octave apart on the piano, they are split into 12 totally, perfectly equal things called semitones. So it's perfect steps. I would demonstrate on my piano, but since it's been locked down, there hasn't been a piano tuner to come in, and it's definitely not 12 equal steps, I must say. But if you have a piano at home, you might be able to test that for yourself and hear it. If we go back before the 18th century, the tuning system was a little different. And if you listen to Renaissance or Baroque music specialists who play on period instruments, you'd be able to hear this. The spaces between the octave are not equally tuned. It's called just temperament and it uh, uses slightly more natural ratios and proportions to get the sound it wants. Many modern composers take the modern tuning system that my piano has, and they extend it to include all of the tiny pitches in between all of the notes on the piano. They're called microtones or quarter tones. And if we were to listen to music from other cultures, Balinese gamelan, for instance, it uses a totally different tuning system of nowhere near the number of notes that we have between an octave on a piano. That's the cultural context of tuning. The second big factor is simply physics. So the way your ear hears sound is that it travels as a wave through the ear, like this. If you have one note, then the waves travel unimpeded. The moment you play another note with it, either it will be the exact same wave, or if it's out of tune, or you choose a more dissonant note that's not exactly the same, the waves start moving against each other. If there are two notes where the waves are related mathematically, so for instance, the wave that the violin is producing might be one of those to two of the oboe at the same time, and they meet at the bottom together, then it will sound in tune. What we hear is the mathematical ratios matching. If they intersect at strange points on their journey, so it's like a clash in the wrong bits of the curve, that's what we hear as dissonance. And I say hear, but actually we're not hearing dissonance. Our eardrums are feeling it. They're feeling the hit of the sound waves together. Whether we enjoy that sensation or that sound or not is totally subjective. And I think of it as being a little bit like having chili in your food. Some people like it just a tiny bit, some people hate it, some people love it really hot. But the interesting thing is, it can change over our lifetime and often does, depending on our exposure to it. So at the moment you might find some music quite dissonant, but if you explore it and listen to it and contextualise it, in a year's time it might be very, very calming and peaceful music to listen to to your ears. The third factor I'm going to talk about is musical context. As a conductor, we have to be a little bit careful in rehearsal sometimes, talking about whether things are in tune or not. Because much of the time, especially with amazing professional players like we have in the orchestra, it's not that an individual is playing out of tune with everyone else. It's more an issue of balance. So if a chord is sounding out of tune, often we can fix it by asking the lower sounding instruments, like the bassoons, the double basses, to play a little louder. And the high instruments, like piccolos, oboes, violins to play a little bit softer, so you end up with a pyramid of sound in terms of the dynamics of how loud things are. And instantly, a lot of what sounds like bad intonation fixes. Working with singers, it can be any number of things that make a singer sound out of tune. It can be their vocal technique, their breath control, or interestingly, the way they form a vowel. So if you think of a really tricky vowel to speak for a, a non-native speaker, like a French E acute, which can be different, even among French speakers it will be slightly different. The, the shape of the vowel changes the resonance of the note. And you can test this yourself really easily with a little trick. If you open your mouth, close the back of your throat with your tongue, so you're not breathing as you do this, 
flick the side of your cheek and mouth different vowel shapes, you'll hear the difference in resonance as your mouth changes shape.